Turbochargers are all dual ball bearing the latest of uh, the offering from Garrett. Uh, we've got a combination of the G25, the G30, the GTW3476 and the GTX3582 Gen 2. Now during all of the videos that we've been putting up on our channel we've had some interaction and some of the guys have asked us please do comparisons and relate to compressor maps with the following turbos. G25660, GTW3476, G30770, and GTX 3582 Gen 2. This is basically an offering which will cater for 90% of the people's street, drift, drag, and circuit type cars and applications. So these four turbochargers cover an absolutely massive range of horsepower offering with the best of spool up, linear response, and obviously downright loaded gun horsepower at the request of a throttle. You punch the throttle, you have horsepower coming in almost immediately, regardless of which of these turbochargers you choose. And we're going to go into how to choose, which to choose, relating to compressor maps for your specific application, specific engine size, compression, boost, fuel type, etc. Let's get into it. Okay, guys, here is the G25660. Once again, I have done a previous uh, review on this. So if you want to see this review, look in the comment section below. I'll put a link over there. G25, 660, it's 660 horsepower capable. It has supplied with a oil fitting, oil feed fitting with a restrictor in it built in it already. We have the water in and out on both sides of the turbocharger. This is just a quick recap. And uh, this specific turbo, if you look at the physical size of this turbo, you'll actually notice that the size of my hand is pretty much the size of the entire compressor. So it's a really compact, high horsepower uh, offering from Garrett, which will spool up faster than any other turbocharger in the same family and make more power than that turbocharger, up to two to three family sizes larger as well. So if you cast your mind back to in the day, the only turbocharger capable of 600 plus horsepower, neighboring the, the 700 horsepower uh, category was the GT, 3582R, which is approximately five family sizes, four family sizes larger than this. This turbocharger supplied with a boost only source, speed sensor port, and it packs a serious punch. It's a nice compact size, and uh, the turbocharger is proven. It's been in the industry for a while now, and uh, there've been various tests done on various size engines from 1600 to two liters. It is a really, really kick-ass turbo. For those of you that are looking for the ultimate in boost response and power delivery, um, G25, either the 550 horse capable or the 660 horse capable is something that you must consider. Okay guys, next up we have the GTW3476. Uh, next up in horsepower, it is a, seven, a 700 horsepower capable turbo. It is based on the old Garrett T3, T4 family combination. Uh, this is a T3 stage 3 turbine, so 55 in front, 65 at the back. Uh, your journal bearing, bearing housing, aluminium back plates, AR70 compressor housing, which is your T4, T04E family AR70 comp housing, and it runs the GTX derived bullet compressor inside. Um, high flow, 9 blade. It is fully serviceable. We have all the components to service and repair these turbochargers at a fraction of the cost of any other performance turbo on the market. Um, the bearing housing features a 360 degree thrust, which is bolted down to the bearing housing. It is ultimately reliable. You can boost this thing to bar boost all day long and uh, you'll have 100% reliability. Um, the pricing we sell this turbocharger for is very, very close to what you'd pay for a uh, Chinese knockoff of the T3, T4. However, this is obviously the genuine Garrett article. It's supplied with either a 48 turbine housing, 63 turbine housing, or 82. T3 flanged in and four bolt out. It's a race style housing, 
great spooler, awesome power delivery, and uh, up to 700 horsepower capable. Next up we have the G30 770. That's the next one up in terms of horsepower capability at 770 horsepower capable. Once again, it's the G series, so oil feed fitting supplied with a restrictor built in. Water in and out, supplied on both sides of the housing. Great flexibility, especially for those guys that have got uh, limited uh, uh, real estate under the hood. It is a completely redesigned nine blade turbine as opposed to the previous GTX 30 family, which was a 10 blade. Uh, the turbine is lighter. It is uh, completely redesigned in terms of aerodynamics. So the flow capacity with back pressure is a much, much less than the previous model. The compressor housing, you will notice the first thing about it is it's really large. And although it doesn't have an AR rating on the front, I'll show you the AR now. I've left the GTW 3476 on the table just to do a direct size for size physical dimension comparison and you will notice that AR70 compressor housing in the TO4E family on the GTW and you actually have the same housing on the G3070 770 AR72 it's got a slightly larger AR in terms of the volute size and obviously flow capacity to the GTW. The GTW has a larger compressor wheel being 76 mil extrusor as opposed to the G30 which is a 71 millimeter compressor. It's also a nine blade design and uh, it has a really really compact size to the compressor so it will basically give you a much better linear response at the same time extremely high flow capacity. We'll start referencing the compressor map shortly. We have a boost only source, speed sensor port, and this specific turbo comes with an option of an AR61 V-band in and out from the T3 family, or the AR83 or the AR1.01. You do get it in various guises in terms of the inlet and outlet flange from T4, T3, internally gated, externally gated, etc. Finally, we have the GTX 3582R. This is the Gen 2. It measures 66 inducer and 82 millimeters on the back of the compressor. It's the latest design arrows on the uh, compressor wheel. Obviously, those have been recently revised and launched at SEMA from uh, the G35 turbocharger. It still uses the old style GTX 35 turbine and the very well known and uh, a little bit long in the tooth old style bearing housing although it has the latest bearing cartridge it's an eight millimeter cartridge silicon nitride balls silver plated uh, components inside something that no other manufacturer does this still has the bearing housing with adapter ring steel adapter ring which basically mates, mates into the ar72 ported shroud to4e compressor housing so these turbochargers are proven uh, side by side with any other turbocharger ball bearing um, in the same family size, this turbocharger, in terms of linear response, spool up as well as uh, horsepower output, nothing can come close to this turbocharger, size for size, pound for pound. Hi guys, okay, so what we're going to do is I want to get into the next phase of this video and we're going to talk about how to create a, a plot on your compressor map. So we're going to basically go in and use a specific engine, we're going to use the same engine and we're going to boost the specific engine to one bar, gauge pressure, one and a half bar and two bar. And then we're basically going to use a formula to calculate all of the values you need to take over onto a compressor map and make a plot, create a plot on a compressor map so you can understand where in the efficiency islands on the compressor map of each of these turbochargers the engine will operate. And I will go into a little bit more detail and educate you on how you can spec a specific turbo for top end runs or for circuit racing or for a street application or for maximum horsepower, a dyno queen or whatever the case might be. So. We're going to basically use that same information and create plots for each of these turbos. Now remember, this guy here, the GTW3476, is the only journal bearing turbo in amongst all of its ball bearing brothers. 
Now, all of these turbos that are, that are incorporated with the ball bearing designs are using the latest technology ball bearing setup. So silicon nitride balls, eight millimeter cartridge, etc., etc. What we need to do is understand how the formula works so that you guys can calculate the uh, horizontal axis and the values on the horizontal axis to give you the pound per minute of airflow that you can use to plot onto a Garrett compressor map, which is read in pounds per minute of airflow. The other axis, the vertical axis, is basically your P2C ratio or pressure ratio that you're going to be using on your, uh, on your vehicle. So the formula is like this. Brake specific fuel consumption times by volumetric efficiency of the engine times by RPM times by cubic inch displacement divided by 1728. That's going to equal cubic feet per minute of airflow that that engine can use. We need to now convert that to pound per minute of airflow, which is what your horizontal axis is on the Garrett compressor map. So you take CFM divided by 14.472 will equal pounds per minute of airflow, which is essentially your horizontal axis. Now the engine we're going to use today is a normally aspirated Toyota 4AGE. It is a 160 horsepower uh, engine which produces 160 horse at, at 7400 rpm. It has got a volumetric efficiency of 100% exactly and it is a relatively small engine which comes in at 96.8 cubic inches. So I'm going to put these values onto the board and uh, we're going to use them to calculate the uh, horizontal axis. I'm only going to use five and a half, six and a half, seven and a half uh, and eight and a half thousand RPM. You guys can obviously use your calculators and I'll show you how that's done to calculate the other RPM ranges to give you an idea of uh, um, where these specific turbochargers will come in on your horizontal axis so that you can take it over onto your uh, compressor maps. So what we're going to do here is just turn this page and we're going to have brake specific fuel consumption of 0.55 times by volumetric efficiency of 1.0 that's basically 100% uh, converted into a percentage times by RPM, which we're going to start off at 5,500 RPM, times by the volumetric efficiency, sorry, uh, sorry, the, the uh, cubic inch displacement, which will be 96.8. And we're going to divide that by 1728, and we're going to have your CFM ratings on the one side, and we're going to have your pounds per minute on the other side. And we're going to have RPM in the middle. We're going to start off at five and a half thousand RPM. We're going to start off at six and a half thousand RPM. We're going to go to seven and a half thousand RPM and eight and a half thousand RPM. Right. So, if you take your calculator and we go 0.55 times by one times by five and a half thousand RPM times by 96.8 equals divided by 1728 should give you. CFM of 169 CFM, okay? 169 CFM divided by 14.472 will give you 11.67 pounds per minute of airflow. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna calculate, which will come in the next step, what this engine and where this engine is gonna perform on the compressor map at one bar boost pressure, gauge pressure, one and a half bar and two bar. So we're gonna do the same calculation three times for each RPM range. The next one is six and a half thousand RPM. Right, so we're going to have 0.55 times by six and a half thousand RPM times by one times by 96.8 equals divided by 17.28 equals 200 CFM divided by 14.472 will give us a 13.8 pound per minute of airflow. That this engine with that volumetric efficiency, RPM, and cubic inch displacement using a brake specific fuel consumption of 0.55 will produce. We're gonna move up to 7,500, so we're gonna go 0.55 times 7,500 RPM times one times 96.8 equals divided by 1728, and that is gonna equal 200. Okay guys, here is the calculations that we've gone and done. So you'll see brake specific fuel consumption of 0.55 times by the VE times by the cubic inch displacement 
times by the RPM divided by 1728 divided by your CFM divided by 14.472 giving you pounds per minute. So on the one bar calculation, we have got 23.4 pounds per minute at 5,500 RPM. We have got 27.66 pounds per minute of, of uh, airflow at 6,500. We've got 31.92 at 7,500. We've got 36.18 at 8,500. Now we're gonna come down to one and a half bar boost gauge pressure, and those are the values at the various RPM points. And we have done the same calculation at two bar with those values over there. So we're gonna to go to a compressor map now, and we're gonna plot those onto the compressor map for each of these turbos. And uh, I will go into a little bit more detail as to how uh, this affects, directly affects your dynograph and the uh, curve. Okay guys. So what we've done is we've done all the calculations and uh, I've gone and taken the G25-660 compressor map and I've basically put it up onto a projector so you guys can see it. And I've gone and taken the plots that were calculated in pounds per minute of airflow at 5,500 RPM, 6,500 RPM, 7,500 and 8,500. And uh, I've gone and plotted them on the compressor map. Now the reason I've gone and used such high RPM is because I've tried to keep this as simple as possible and uh, I know that on this specific turbo that the turbocharger will be in 100% boost at one bar uh, gauge pressure at 5,500 RPM making this explanation a lot easier. So at 5,500 RPM we are running at approximately 23.4 uh, 23 pounds per minute of airflow which is there's your 25 pound mark that is one bar gauge pressure. So how this works is at the coast or at sea level, your pressure ratio, atmospheric pressure will be one bar, but your gauge pressure will be zero. So one bar, atmospheric pressure, gauge pressure zero. One and a half bar, one and a half times atmospheric, gauge pressure uh, 0 0.5. Two bar or two times atmospheric, one bar gauge pressure. Okay, so that is one bar boost on the gauge, 24 or sorry, should I say 25 pound per minute of airflow just inside of the 25 pound per minute of airflow mark and you basically are sitting on a efficiency island of 75% if you follow the line. So the turbocharger can only get stronger, the power can only increase from there. 6,500 RPM, we are sitting at approximately 27 pounds per minute of airflow. Um, and at 7,531 and at 8,500 approximately 37 pounds per minute of airflow. So at maximum RPM, if you're revving the engine to 8,500 RPM, you will be sitting in the maximum efficiency island of 79% on a G25-660. So let's move on to the next slide, which is going to be your uh, GTW3476, and then we'll have a look and see how they compare. Okay guys, so this is the GTW3476 compressor map. We've used the exact same pound per minute of airflow plots as the first slide with the G25660. So we've got 23 pounds per minute of airflow, uh, 27, 31.9, and 36. So once again, at one bar boost pressure, two times atmospheric at the coast, and here's your pound per minute of airflow, approximately 23, will give you an efficiency of around about, you're not really seeing it, but you're probably looking at about 65% efficiency. Um, it starts picking up quite a lot more purely because it's journal bearing and the rotating assembly is, is, is not as efficient due to the size of the GTW as the G25, but it starts picking up um, at 6,500, that's 5,500, there's 6,500 RPM, you're starting to see an efficiency of around about 68%, and once again, 76%, and at 8,500 8 RPM, you're sitting at a 77% 77 efficiency. Now remember, that's at one bar. As soon as we increase to one and a half and two bar, these things are gonna start changing, and so are the airflow in pounds per minute of airflow of the engine. So you're gonna start seeing a totally different picture, which we'll get to just now. Let's go to the G30 770.
Right guys, here's the G30 770 compressor map. Same values, 5.5, 6.5, 7.5, 8.5 thousand RPM. Let's have a look at the 5,500 RPM mark. You're probably looking at a roundabout an efficiency of 65 once again. But once again, a larger rotating assembly. Um, as the RPM increases, we're looking at approximately yeah, 65. So we were at 60, sorry. That's around about 60. Coming into about 65 at 6,500 RPM. 7,500 RPM, we're sitting at 70% efficiency to 71. Um, and then obviously 8,500 RPM, we're sitting at a 75 percent efficiency just outside of the maximum efficiency we're not running high enough boost pressure to come into the maximum efficiency of this turbocharger at one bar with a specific size engine uh, let's move on to the gtx 3582 uh, gen 2 and then uh, we'll start plotting at the one and a half bar boost pressure and the two bar boost pressure and we'll start again with the g25 3476 the g30 and once again the 3582 Hi guys, okay, 3582R Gen 2, same 5.5, 6.5, 7.5, 8.5 thousand RPM plots, um, and one bar gauge pressure, two times atmospheric, approximately 25 or 23 pounds, 26, 31, 36. So once again, not very efficient at that boost pressure uh, with this size engine. You can obviously see the engine's cubic inches are quite low, so you're not getting uh, a lot of efficiency on the actual turbocharger in terms of the compressor map at that boost pressure as the RPM increases it gets a little bit better so you're starting to come into about a 60 maybe 62 percent efficiency and then as we get to seven and a half thousand RPM you're starting to come into around about a 71 70 71 percent area and then obviously finally at eight and a half thousand RPM you're coming into 74 75 percent efficiency so let's see what happens as you start uh, increasing the boost pressure with a specific size very small engine and uh, we'll start plotting the next graphs at the next boost pressure that's going to be one and a half bar gauge and two bar gauge and obviously the uh, flow capacities are all changed so let's get into that and see how it fares okay guys we're back again on the g25 660 compressor map but this time we're running one and a half bar gauge pressure two and a half times atmospheric and obviously at five and a half, six and a half, seven and a half and eight and a half thousand RPM we're starting to run 29 pounds, 34, 39 and 45 pounds of uh, air that the engine can consume at that boost pressure. Now this changes the map completely. If you have a look at the first uh, five and a half thousand RPM efficiency island, you, you're probably running down approximately down to around your 65-ish mark and as the RPM increases you jump straight away to the 76 right into the middle of the 79 and you fall over the edge of the 79% into the 78% efficiency so this turbocharger at one and a half bar boost pressure seems to be a beautiful match to a 4 AGE um, your acceleration the boost pressure will come up you will be at maximum boost pressure at one and a half bar boost at five and a half thousand rpm um, and it will basically increase your dyno graph will carry on increasing all the way up to around about this area here and just as you fall off at about eight thousand eight thousand two hundred rpm the dyno graph will actually start to fall off power torque will more than likely hold level up to around about your, your, your peak efficiency and from there she'll start plateau, it, it, the, the plateau will finish off and start falling off the other side from there so beautiful match nice match we're going to still do a plot on the two bar gauge pressure setup let's move on to the gtw 3476 now let's see how that compares okay guys 3476 gtw journal bearing five and a half six and a half seven and a half eight and a half same plot one and a half bar boost pressure not very efficient at that point uh, Six and a half thousand RPM starting to come into the efficiency range in the 60s, high 60s. At seven and a half thousand RPM, you're sitting at 76 percent, and at eight and a half thousand RPM, you're smack bang in the middle of the efficiency island. In this specific case, the dyno graph, power graph, will continue to climb all the way until you get to eight and a half thousand RPM. It will not taper off because as the RPM increases, so are you moving up the efficiency range of the compressor. Torque will follow quite a similar 
a, a line, it'll basically come up to your plateau around about the six and a half thousand, maybe seven thousand RPM range, and then from there it will basically plateau and will hold firm all the way up to eight and a half, provided you use eight and a half thousand RPM as your limiter. Let's compare that to the G30 now. Okay, guys, G30 770, 5, 6, 7, 8,500 RPM, quite low on the efficiency islands. As you move up to 6,500 RPM, you're starting to come, out, come into your 68% efficiency, which is great already. 7,500, you're almost at maximum efficiency, you're running at around about 75%, uh, 74, 75%, and at 8,500, you're just coming into the 76% efficiency island. Now, once again, similar to the GTW3476, the power graph continue to climb as you start approaching the maximum efficiency island and torque as per the 3476. This is a fantastic match in terms of a circuit car that spends its life on this size engine at the higher RPM range above 6,500 RPM. Same goes for the 3476. If you're building a drag car, a top-end runner, or a circuit car that spends most of its life in the high RPM range, this is a perfect match for that. Even at one and a half bar boost, it's great. Okay guys, this is the GTX 3582 Gen 2. Once again, not very, very good at uh, five and a half thousand RPM with this size engine on this large turbocharger. Six and a half thousand RPM, you're still pretty poor. It's down in the 60, between 60 and 65 efficiency range. 7,500 RPM, however, starts coming into the 72, 73 efficiency range. And at 8,500, you're starting to come into the maximum efficiency. You still have a little bit more. If you can rev this engine to 9,000, you will basically make power all the way up until 9,000 RPM. Only once you've reached 9,500, 9,700 will the power start falling down. Great for drags, great for circuit racing or top end runs. Not as great for a street car because you're starting to lose efficiency down below. So these, these graphs should actually look, look a little bit lower than this because at 5,500 RPM, you won't be at 1.5 bar boost pressure on the gauge. Uh, you'll probably be making about 1.2, 1.1, round about there, and then you'll start coming up to the efficiency. So this specific turbo will be a bit more on the laggy side. I've left this in line for simpl uh, simplification reasons. I just wanna, don't want to overcomplicate this video. Um, if you are interested, post comments below and we can actually just go and make a new video and uh, go into a little bit more depth on how to calculate the turbine back pressure compressor, uh, turbine back pressures in relation to the compressor map. And you can actually go and plot exactly where you would be based on the compression ratio of the engine, um, the length of your runners, the design of the collector. It starts getting quite complicated, but that's for another video. This turbocharger, great for top end, great for circuit racing. Um, a little bit on the laggy side, uh, I, would, I would couple this up with a slightly higher compression engine, although keeping the same cubic inch displacement and running methanol, uh, you'd start picking up uh, a little bit more on the uh, efficiencies and you'd get the thing into boost a little bit more, uh, a little bit quicker. But let's move on and go and have a look at the two bar gauge pressure maps. Okay guys, back to the G, uh, G25 660. Two bar, gauge pressure, three times atmospheric, and five and a half, six and a half, seven and a half, eight and a half. At five and a half thousand at this boost pressure, you're starting to see running slightly higher in the efficiency islands. Six and a half, you're already at 76. Seven and a half, you're at 77. Eight and a half, you've already fallen over. So at that boost pressure, the turbocharger is a little bit on the smaller side, um, and you're starting to find that your graph will fall over the edge. Not everybody runs these engines to 8,500 RPM, remember that. So, you know, normally people would, would run uh, a standard engine without any cams, etc., to around about 7,500, maybe 7,800 RPM, which would approximately be in this area here. So, still great for response, great for uh, um, power delivery throughout the entire RPM. And here's the key for every 10 pounds of air that an engine can consume per minute equates to approximately 100 horsepower. So we are sitting here at approximately 50, 52, 53 pounds uh, per minute, actually 54 pounds per minute of airflow, which will equate to 540 to 550 horsepower that this engine will be making at two bar boost. Now, obviously this is on a standard engine, 
Um, it doesn't take into account camshaft, doesn't take into account um, exhaust, intercooler, all those kind of things. It's a, a rule of thumb, an estimate on what you can expect out of a turbocharger, but these plots over here are most definitely accurate. Let's move on to the GTW and see how that fares. Okay guys, 3476, 5, 6, 7, and 8,500 RPM once again. A little bit on the laggy side, close to surge. Very close to the surge limit. So you might find that uh, the turbocharger will uh, uh, um, almost come into surge at wide open throttle at 5,500 RPM. Even though it has a ported shroud housing, which will obviously overcome that, you are very close to the surge limit on the specific turbocharger. But as the RPM passes, you start coming into the high uh, efficiency islands from 6,500, 6 to 6,5,000, 7,5, 8,5. 8,5, you just started to fall over the edge. Now, if you have a look at this once again, that engine can only consume 54 pounds of air per minute at 8,500 RPM at that boost pressure. So you will approximately make 450 to 500, uh, 550 horsepower at that specific boost pressure. Make changes to the engine, camshafts, valves, etc. things will change. But on a stock standard compression, standard camshaft, standard cubic inch displacement engine, two bar boost, this is a great turbocharger. A little bit laggy on the, on the, a little on the laggy side, but once again, it will work very, very well for um, a top end car, uh, a drag car, and also a circuit racer. It is quite quite good for a streetable car, provided you're revving the engine to eight and a half thousand RPM. But uh, I would suggest something slightly smaller, or you could use this turbocharger together with the AR48 turbine housing, which will bring this boost pressure in a little bit quicker and move these uh, uh, little plots at two bar boost over away from the surge limit a little bit more. Let's go to the G3770. Okay, guys, this is the G3770. Wow, this is an amazing, amazing turbocharger. If you ever look at, never mind five and a half, six and a half, seven and a half, eight and a half thousand, which obviously are exactly the same plots as all the other compressor maps, have a look at this. Look how high and the maximum efficiency island of 76% actually runs. You will still be in the maximum efficiency island of this 71 millimeter X juicer compressor at almost two and a half bar boost pressure. That is phenomenal. Most of the turbochargers start running out of steam and you start falling off and falling outside of the efficiency islands the higher you boost. This has got a very wide range, so it caters for a, a wide range of engine sizes from small to very, very large and still maintains a very high level of efficiency. Even the lowest point of the efficiency island here is around about 60%, 60 which is great, but you quickly move over to the higher efficiency island. So this turbocharger will spool fast it will perform well and it will basically suit a small size engine for street application, circuit drag, top end runs beautifully. So far this is uh, second in my opinion to the G25, however will make slightly less horsepower on the G25 than the G30. Let's check and see how the uh, map compares to the 3582 Gen 2. Okay guys, this is the 3582 Gen 2. Once again, very close to the surge limit at 5,500 RPM. It will be very laggy before that. 6.5 starts coming into song. 7.5 back up to the high efficiency areas and 8.5, 74%. So you're already fallen off at this boost pressure, uh, the top of the 3582 Gen 2. Um, this is great for top end. It's great for circuit racing where you spend all of your time up top. Um, and a top end runner, a one kilometer sprinter, or whatever the case might be. For a street car, not so great. Um, and as you increase the boost pressure because of the slant of the surge line, as you increase boost pressure, you'll get even closer to the surge limit on the specific turbo. Uh, it will make immense power, provided you start changing cam profiles, cam timing, those kind of things. But on a stock standard engine, standard compression, standard volumetric efficiency, this is pretty much what you can expect. Now. How often do people actually go and leave an engine stock standard with a standard compression ratio, standard cams, valves, when they turbocharge an engine? Not that often. So you'll still make your 550 horsepower on this motor at this boost pressure, even with this turbocharger, purely because of the fact that the engine is only able to consume 
54 pounds per minute of airflow. Once you start changing the dynamics of the engine, the engine will allow a lot more air to be uh, accepted into the engine, burnt and obviously come out of the exhaust, which will allow to make more horsepower. Standard engine, guys, keep that in mind. You can't, uh, you can't say that, yeah, it's a bigger turbocharger boosting two bar, how come it's not making more power? It's all dependent on the volumetric efficiency of the engine itself. Hope this has been informative. Hope it's been educational for you guys. If there's any comments, post them down below. Interact with us. Don't forget to subscribe. Give us a like. If you don't like us, give us a thumbs down. Any constructive criticism is welcome. See you guys next time.